20 years, $2.8 billion still grounded. Dream Chaser's epic failure just handed SpaceX a $3 billion monopoly they never expected. While Elon celebrated, NASA discovered something that could end the space plane industry forever. What killed Dream Chaser will terrify every SpaceX competitor. Let's dive right in. Picture this. While SpaceX was failing spectacularly with exploding Falcon 1 rockets on a remote Pacific island, Dream Chaser was the golden child. Government contracts, aerospace pedigree, and a design so elegant it made Dragon look like a flying trash can. But here's the brutal truth. Dream Chaser's sophisticated approach was actually its death sentence. Every elegant wing surface became a heat shield nightmare. Every runway landing capability added thousands of failure points. While SpaceX embraced crude simplicity, Sierra Space chose beautiful complexity. The result? SpaceX went from startup joke to space monopoly. Dream Chaser went from aerospace darling to $2.8 billion embarrassment. In 2010, both Dragon and Dream Chaser received NASA contracts. The mission was identical, replace the space shuttle. But their approaches couldn't have been more different. SpaceX chose the dumb option, a basic capsule that crashes into the ocean. No wings, no landing gear, no sophisticated flight computers, just point, fly, and splash. Sierra Space chose the smart option, a mini space shuttle with airplane landing, precision control, and reusable elegance. Every aerospace engineer loved it. NASA officials praised its innovation. But here's what shocked everyone. The dumb approach was actually genius. Dragon flew its first mission in 2010, just four years after contract award. Dream Chaser still hasn't flown after 21 years. The elegant solution became an engineering nightmare that's still grounded. While Sierra Space engineers were debugging millions of lines of flight control software, SpaceX was already delivering cargo to the International Space Station. Their secret weapon wasn't advanced technology, it was ruthless simplification. Every Dream Chaser delay handed SpaceX another victory. Every missed milestone gave Dragon more market share. Every just six more months promised strengthened SpaceX's position. But the real genius was psychological. SpaceX convinced NASA that good enough was better than perfect. They proved that flying today beats perfection tomorrow. By 2014, when NASA had to choose crew vehicles, the writing was on the wall. SpaceX had flight experience. Dream Chaser had PowerPoint presentations. Here's where Dream Chaser hit a wall that would make any programmer weep. NASA's software certification requirements. Every line of code controlling flight surfaces, landing gear, and life support had to be mathematically proven correct. We're talking about software more complex than fighter jets with zero tolerance for bugs. SpaceX's Dragon software was embarrassingly simple by comparison. Go up, come down, splash in ocean. Dream Chaser needed automated runway approaches, crosswind handling, and abort scenarios that would make airline pilots nervous. The kicker? A single software bug could kill seven astronauts. NASA demanded perfection, and perfection takes forever. While Dream Chaser engineers spent years proving their code worked, SpaceX was flying missions and learning from real experience. Theory versus practice. Perfection versus iteration. Guess which approach won? But software wasn't Dream Chaser's only killer. In 2019, they hit an even worse problem. Their hybrid rocket engines. Hybrid engines sound brilliant on paper. Part solid fuel, part liquid oxidizer. Safer than pure liquid engines, more controllable than solid rockets. The perfect compromise. Reality check. Hybrid engines are certification nightmares. They need to restart reliably after months in space vacuum. They need precise thrust control for landing. They need to work perfectly every single time. SpaceX's Dragon uses proven Super Draco engines based on decades of rocket technology. Sierra Space chose innovative hybrids because they wanted to be different. Innovation killed them. While SpaceX was flying proven technology, Dream Chaser was still ground testing experimental engines. The gap became insurmountable. Here's where Dream Chaser's story gets truly tragic. 
Sierra Space made a deal with United Launch Alliance that seemed smart, but became their doom. ULA offered political protection, government connections, and aerospace credibility. Boeing and Lockheed Martin's joint venture versus Elon Musk's upstart company? Easy choice for conservative Sierra Space, but ULA had their own disasters brewing. Their new Vulcan rocket was years behind schedule. Their older Atlas Vive rockets were being retired. Military missions were backing up like traffic on a highway. Meanwhile, SpaceX offered Falcon 9 launches for $67 million. ULA's Vulcan costs over $100 million. That $33 million difference per launch adds up to hundreds of millions over Dream Chaser's planned missions. But switching to SpaceX meant admitting their entire strategy was wrong. It meant abandoning political allies for their biggest competitor. Sierra Space chose loyalty over logic. In January 2024, Sierra Space made their boldest promise yet. Dream Chaser would finally fly in 2025. NASA scheduled the mission. Media outlets prepared coverage. Fans marked calendars. July 2025 arrived. NASA held their quarterly mission briefing. They listed upcoming cargo flights. SpaceX Dragon in August. Northrop Grumman in September. Japanese HTV later in the year. Dream Chaser? Completely absent. Not mentioned. Not acknowledged. Not even listed as delayed. Eric Berger from Ars Technica broke the devastating news. Dream Chaser had been quietly removed from NASA's manifest. No announcement, no explanation, just silence. 21 years of development, $2.8 billion in funding, and they couldn't even get mentioned in a NASA meeting. But here's the twist that changes everything. Dream Chaser's delays might have accidentally saved ULA from total collapse. ULA is drowning in a backlog of military launches. The Space Force has 26 critical missions waiting for Vulcan certification. These contracts are worth hundreds of millions each far more valuable than commercial Dream Chaser flights. Every Dream Chaser delay frees up a launch slot for military missions. Every missed deadline gives ULA breathing room for their defense contracts. Sierra Space's failure became ULA's lifeline. The question haunting the industry, was this delay intentional? Did ULA prioritize military missions over Dream Chaser on purpose? If so, Sierra Space got played by their own launch provider. Their partner chose military money over commercial promises. Dream Chaser's failure mirrors Boeing's Starliner disaster perfectly. Both were supposed to compete with SpaceX. Both received massive government funding. Both failed spectacularly. Starliner's first crewed mission became an eight-month nightmare when thrusters failed. The astronauts had to return on Dragon, the very spacecraft Starliner was meant to replace. The pattern is clear. Traditional aerospace companies can't match SpaceX's innovation speed. They're fighting tomorrow's war with yesterday's tactics. Complex designs, bureaucratic processes, and risk-averse thinking versus rapid iteration, bold testing, and fail-fast learning. Old space versus new space. Guess which philosophy wins? Here's the number that kills Dream Chaser's business case. $231 million in extra launch costs versus SpaceX. Seven planned missions at $33 million extra per launch equals $231 million in unnecessary expenses. That's nearly a quarter billion dollars wasted on expensive launches. NASA is taxpayer-funded. Congress scrutinizes every dollar. When Dream Chaser finally flies, if it ever flies, those launch costs will be investigated ruthlessly. SpaceX proves space access doesn't have to bankrupt governments. Dream Chaser proved traditional aerospace still doesn't understand this reality. Dream Chaser accumulated massive technical debt, engineering shortcuts that seemed smart initially, but became crushing liabilities. Design decisions made in 2004 couldn't handle 2025 safety requirements. Wings optimized for runway landings created re-entry heating problems. Hybrid engines that seemed innovative became certification nightmares. SpaceX took the opposite approach. Start simple, add complexity gradually. Dragon began as basic cargo delivery and evolved into crew transportation. Each mission taught lessons that improved the next flight. Dream Chaser tried solving every problem simultaneously. SpaceX solved one problem at a time. That philosophical difference explains everything. 
Sierra Space faces an impossible political situation. They've taken billions in government funding specifically to provide SpaceX competition. Switching to SpaceX launches would admit their entire purpose was meaningless. Boeing and Lockheed Martin have massive political influence. Congressional districts, lobby groups, campaign contributions, decades of relationships built on mutual benefit. SpaceX, led by unpredictable Elon Musk, lacks this political infrastructure. Musk's controversial statements make him radioactive in Washington circles. Choosing SpaceX would be seen as betrayal by Sierra Space's political allies. It would end relationships worth billions in future contracts. Politics trumps performance in aerospace. Dream Chaser's failure is reshaping the entire commercial space industry in terrifying ways. Small launch companies bet on Dream Chaser, creating demand for alternative providers. Those companies are now struggling as SpaceX dominates everything. NASA's commercial program assumed multiple providers would drive down costs through competition. With Dream Chaser failing, SpaceX is becoming the only reliable option. International allies watch Dream Chaser as proof America still innovated in aerospace. Its failure reinforces perceptions that only SpaceX represents new American space capability. The monopoly effects will last decades. Dream Chaser wasn't just a spacecraft. It was supposed to prove traditional aerospace could compete with SpaceX innovation. Sierra Space now faces the ultimate sunk cost dilemma. 21 years and $2.8 billion invested. Canceling means admitting total failure. Continuing means throwing good money after bad. NASA is equally trapped. They've invested heavily in Dream Chaser as their SpaceX alternative. Canceling destroys their competition strategy. Continuing funds a program that may never succeed. Meanwhile, SpaceX launches multiple missions monthly, earning revenue and improving systems. Every day, Dream Chaser stays grounded, the gap grows wider, and recovery becomes more impossible. The aerospace industry learned a brutal lesson. Innovation can't be bought with government contracts. It must be earned through trial, error, and relentless iteration. But the most shocking part of this story is still coming. What NASA discovered about Dream Chaser's fundamental problems will change how we think about space transportation forever. The technical failures, political missteps, and financial disasters were just symptoms. The real disease goes much deeper, threatening the entire future of winged spacecraft and the implications for SpaceX's competition, even more terrifying than anyone imagined. So here's what Dream Chaser's 20-year failure really accomplished. It didn't just waste $2.8 billion. It handed SpaceX a monopoly that even NASA now fears. Every delayed test flight was another nail in competition's coffin. But here's the question that keeps aerospace executives awake at night. Was this inevitable? Or could traditional aerospace have beaten SpaceX with the right approach? Because while Dream Chaser sits in hangars gathering dust, SpaceX is already planning missions to Mars. The window for competition isn't just closing, it's nearly slammed shut. What do you think? Could any company have stopped SpaceX's dominance? Or was the new space revolution always destined to crush old aerospace thinking? Let me know in the comments. And if this breakdown shocked you as much as it did the industry, we've got more explosive space stories coming your way. NASA just fired 4,000 workers in one brutal month. But this isn't just layoffs, it's America handing space dominance to Elon Musk on a silver platter. While NASA cancels Mars missions and kills nuclear rockets, SpaceX is quietly preparing to become the new NASA. The $24 billion question, will SpaceX save American space dreams, or is this the end of NASA forever? Let's write in. Here's the brutal truth NASA doesn't want you to know. While 4,000 brilliant scientists and engineers walked out the door in July, SpaceX was quietly hiring. Every NASA expert that left, SpaceX gains a potential recruit. Every canceled NASA program, SpaceX steps in to fill the void. This isn't just budget cuts. This is the largest government-sanctioned transfer of space dominance to a private company in history. 
And Elon Musk saw it coming years ago. July 2025 wasn't NASA's budget crisis. It was SpaceX's Christmas morning. The new administration slashed NASA's budget by $6 billion, from $24.9 billion down to $18.8 billion. But here's the twist. That same administration is now paying SpaceX billions more to do NASA's job. The first wave hit in March when NASA fired Dr. Catherine Calvin, one of their top climate scientists. Where do you think those climate research contracts went? Private companies. Companies like SpaceX that are already studying atmospheric conditions for Mars colonization. When 2,140 senior NASA employees got fired in one week, the space industry didn't mourn, they celebrated. These weren't random layoffs. We're talking about GS-15 level experts earning $160,000 annually, with decades of experience on the most complex space missions ever attempted. But here's what the media missed. 875 of those fired employees were the absolute top-tier managers and scientists in the agency. The people who designed the Mars rovers, built the James Webb telescope, and planned lunar missions. SpaceX doesn't need to steal NASA's secrets anymore. They're hiring the people who created them. Think about this. NASA spent 50 years training these experts, and now they're walking straight into SpaceX's offices. It's like Apple losing all their iPhone designers to Samsung, except this is America's space program. While NASA bleeds talent, SpaceX is already replacing their core missions. Remember the Mars sample return mission that got canceled? The $7 billion program that was supposed to bring back Martian soil? SpaceX's Starship can do that mission for under $100 million. One Starship launch costs less than 1% of NASA's canceled Mars program. But there's a bigger game being played here. China is racing ahead with their own Mars sample return mission while NASA abandons theirs. But SpaceX? They're not just planning to return samples. They're planning to send humans to Mars and bring them back alive. Who's really protecting America's space leadership now? Here's where it gets absolutely insane. NASA just canceled their entire nuclear propulsion program. Technology that could cut Mars travel time from nine months to three months. Project Draco, worth 